hey Jude, or should I say, hey everybody, not just Jude, because I know there's many of you watching here, but we're going to focus on the book of Jude. So, hey Jude, stick to the word. Yes, welcome to today's devotions. I'm Adam, if you don't know me, I'm part of the New to Faith team in Manchester with my wife, Jason. It is an absolute pleasure to be with you. Do you know devotions are so, so important? We should do daily devotions. It should be one of our new habits for 2024. If they reach even one person and their hearts and their minds are changed, we know, like we say at the church services, when one person responds to Jesus, the whole of heaven celebrates and we celebrate with them. So we celebrate people as we do these devotions and their hearts and minds are indeed changed in Jesus' name. We are looking at the book of Jude, as mentioned yesterday, Pastor Darren, he went over the first parts of the book. Well, it's a very short book. It's a very short chapter. You could even say it's a short page. There are not that many verses, so you can go away and read it yourself in your own time like that, and it will be over and done with, and you can come back as I pause. I'm sure that wasn't long enough, but let's <laughs> let's crack on. This month, we are indeed working through the book of Jude, and we are digging deep because we want to extract some amazing nuggets of wisdom from within this teeny tiny book. It might be small, but it's powerful. Don't judge it on its size or length. If you spent time reading through it yourself, like I say, one chapter, you'll know it's got some amazing stuff in it. It's believed that Jude, short for Judas, and he is a half-brother or some relation of Jesus in some form. This book is actually what you'd call maybe like a postcard from a leader. It's an epistle, like the ones that the letters that Paul wrote. It's an epistle. It's a postcard. It's a tiny thing from a leader sent to encourage, challenge, and edify the people of the time. But equally, it can encourage challenge and edify us right now because this is the amazing thing about the word of god it is living and breathing you can come to it time and time again you can read the same passage repeatedly and it will throw something brand new at you because the holy spirit wants to reveal more to you and god wants to speak to you through his word so it's well worth diving in again now have you ever been offered a fake t-shirt or a fake watch, or a fake bag. One of those people with those big jackets that open it up and they've got all the things hanging there. Now, some fakes are very, very easy to spot. If you see Chanel, spelt with a double N, for instance, or you see Gucci, spelt with a CH, then you kind of know it's rather fake. But what happens when the counterfeit or the fake is actually so subtle or the scam seems genuine. Like those voice phishing things nowadays where you just can't really tell if it's a genuine person or not. And you only find out too late. That's the problem. What happens in that situation? You may be reading or watching or nodding in memory of being deceived right now. It's not good, is it? It's painful. It's hurtful. It's shameful. We feel so personally aggrieved and rightly so now we can find ourselves deceived and scammed by half truths very quickly and we've all had these moments perhaps it's good advice that you're given that in reality becomes bad advice it could be poor company that later corrupts your good character that's a very key one there isn't it Lots of religions that in reality are empty on the inside. Many people have had church hurts because of that. It could be the next new cryptocurrency. Let's get all technical and fancy and modern today. Or any get rich quick scheme. <laughs> I couldn't even say that one. Get rich quick scheme that we end up losing money on. Could be any of those. None of them are good. Jude chapter 1 verse 3 NIV says, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith 
that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. Amen. Entrusted to God's holy people. We are all God's holy people. We are set apart, a holy nation. Jude was written by Jesus's, as we believe, half-brother, also known as Judas. You can understand why he perhaps didn't want to keep that name and refer to himself as Jude. It was written approximately 60 to 70 AD, only 25 to 40 years after Jesus' death and his resurrection. As we heard yesterday, the leaders of the early church were wrestling with people, trying to change the beliefs of the church to suit themselves. How often have you come across this? Half-truths, fakes, scams flying about, and people were getting deceived and confused because they trusted them. It's much like today. We live in a world where our faith is under intense pressure to conform to the culture around us, to change with the times, and sometimes it can lead to us believing the wrong people. Sometimes the loudest voice seems the most convincing, and it can be really, really problematic. Jude writes a short, sharp letter to the church both warning about these people and urging us and them to fight for the truths that they believed in and we believe in. Now, the language of Jude is actually very, very strong here. He uses the word contend, which is fight for, stop intruders. That's how vital this is. And that's how vital it still is today. Now, why is Jude so direct and passionate about this? And what danger is he seeing and discerning? Now, the danger is that if we don't contend for the word, we'll conform to the world. Romans 12, 12 reminds us that we should not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Then we will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Please don't forget, we cannot be one foot in the world, one foot out of the world. You know, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. You have to remember this. If you try to balance both, what you will eventually do is you will drift further and further and then fall into the depths. And nobody wants to do that. Now, yesterday we said, let's make a decision to be a person of God's word. If we're on terms with God's word, then we're on good terms. If we are on the land with God's word, it's solid ground. We should know his word, stick to his word. So today, let's be determined to not conform to the patterns and ways of this world, but to be set apart, to be that holy nation in the world, but not of the world. Keep that up here. Lock it away and let it drop into your heart. Take care, my friends, and I shall see you soon. Have a blessed rest of your day. Bye for now.